All right, welcome. Come along with me as we do the guidelines for a healthy diet tutorial. In this lesson, you will identify characteristics of the MyPlate Food Guidance System. Formerly known as the Food Pyramid. Introduction. We all know we should eat healthy food, but a lot of us probably think healthy food is boring and tasteless. Can it really be as good as pizza, fries, soda, and burgers? In fact, food can be both healthy and tasty. Using the MyPlate system is a good way to find a variety of food that meets our nutritional as well as our taste needs. Take a few minutes to explore the food guidelines. Ooh, 144 pages of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, 2015 to 2028th edition. Feel free to check that out. The five food groups. Here is a picture of the food plate. The four wedges on the plate represent four of the food groups. The two wedges on the left represent fruits and vegetables. The two wedges on the right represent grains and protein. The circle next to the plate represents the fifth food group, dairy. As you can see, the size of each wedge on the plate varies, but not by much. The different sizes are proportional to the amounts we should eat from each food group. To find more information about the five food groups, return to the food guidelines. Then select a food group to learn more. Grains, breads, pasta, oatmeal, cereals, tortillas, and grits belong to the grains group. They're made from grains such as wheat, rice, corn, barley, and oats. You need to eat more from the grains group than from any other food group. Grains are divided into two groups, whole grains and refined grains. When you buy breads, look for a brand that says whole wheat. Whole grains are healthier because they have more fiber which helps reduce the risk of heart and digestive diseases. A proper diet includes six to seven ounces of grains daily. Don't worry, you don't need to carry around a scale. A one ounce serving of grains is one slice of whole wheat bread or one half cup of cooked brown rice or pasta. Ready to eat cereals vary in weight. So check the nutrition label on the box for this information. Vegetables. The next food group is vegetables. Any vegetable or 100% vegetable juice is a member of this group. Vegetables are organized into five subgroups based on their nutrient content. The five subgroups are dark green vegetables, orange vegetables, dry beans and peas, starchy vegetables, and other vegetables. Vegetables provide essential nutrients that reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and diabetes. You should eat two to three cups of raw or cooked vegetables every day. Variety is the trick to ensuring that you get enough vegetables without getting bored with them. Alternate between cooked vegetables, juices, and salads. Fruits. Fruits are next. Any whole fruits or 100% fruit juice is a part of this group. So when it says 100% fruit juice, it's very easy to grab a fruit juice that does not contain 100% fruit. It may contain um, high fructose corn syrup. It may contain other ingredients that is not fruit, and it makes it generally sweeter, and you might crave it more. Things to avoid are things like fruit cocktail, those are generally at, have additional sweeteners. Fruits are good for you in any form, fresh, canned, frozen, or dried. Fruits contain fiber and vitamins that help your body tissues grow and keep your teeth and gums healthy. Teenagers need about two cups of fruits in their daily diet. As with vegetables, choose a variety of fruits instead of eating the same type all the time. For example, try a mango instead of an apple. 
whole fruits are always better for you than fruit juices. Eating fresh fruits with yogurt, dried fruits with nuts, and baked fruits are other tasty ways to get fruits into your diet. Avoid fruits prepared with added sugar. Proteins. The next food group is proteins. Meat, fish, poultry, dried beans, and nuts are some of the foods in this group. Eggs belong in this group too. Meat and beans are rich in protein and help in the overall growth of your body. You should consume five to six ounces of meat and beans every day. Always try to choose lean cuts of meat, chicken, poultry, and fish over fatty ones. And when possible, choose meat that is grilled, baked, or boiled rather than fried. I believe this is a question, what, what um, food group helps with overall growth of your body? Dairy. Dairy is the last food group. All liquid milk products such as flavored milk and foods such as yogurt and cheese make up this food group. You need three cups of food from the dairy group in your daily diet. Foods from this group help make your bones stronger and regulate blood circulation. Remember that drinking milk isn't the only way to get nutrients from this food group. Try yogurt with a cup of fruit or a yogurt-based smoothie. Cheese with whole wheat bread or crackers are another delicious option. For people who are lactose intolerant, many substitutes are available. Soy milk, for example, is fortified with the same nutrients as those in milk products. There's also almond milk. There's also coconut milk. There's um, oat milk now, rice milk. So there's a lot of options. Some taste okay. Some are barely tolerable, but you can find options. Oh, which, uh, which is a benefit of eating meat and beans? It helps your overall growth. See, uh, it helps in the overall growth of your body. I thought that sounded familiar. Match each group food group to the correct daily serving quantity. Five to six ounces of protein, six to seven ounces of grains, two cups of fruits, two to three cups of vegetables, three cups dairy. Other information in the food guidelines. We've seen that nutrients in the five food groups are important for a healthy body. Following a healthy diet also means consuming salt and oils in moderation. Both salt and oils provide some essential elements that help the body. We need salt to help balance the level of fluids in our bodies and to help muscles, nerves, and the stomach function. But too much salt can increase blood pressure. We need oils to digest certain vitamins, but excess oils can cause weight gain and contribute to heart problems. Some oils are better for us than others. Healthy choices include monounsaturated and polyunsaturated oils, such as olive oil, canola oil, corn oil, and sunflower oil. Look for these oils when choosing foods such as mayonnaise and salad dressing. How many calories a person should eat in a day depends on gender, age, and level of physical activity. Notice where it says Joe's recommended calorie intake is this part on your guided notes gets a little out of order. Let me see if I can find it here. So it talks about calories, how many calories a person needs based on this. And then it mentions Joe's calorie intake. And then it, 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 it's kind of out of order. So just notice that here's where Joe's recommended calorie intake shows up and that it might not be in, a, in direct order on here. 
Joe's recommended calorie intake is 2,000 calories per day. On a particular day, Joe eats foods rich in essential nutrients that add up to only 1,800 calories. This leaves 200 calories he could still consume on that day. These available calories are called discretionary calories. They can be used to make up the difference between the number of calories you need in a day and the number you've eaten that day to fulfill your nutritional requirements. Okay, so little side note here. The math on this is he's supposed to have a recommended calorie intake of 2,000 calories per day. 2,000 recommended calorie intake minus the 1,800 that he ate, right? He, he only eats 1,800 calories in this day. Then the difference here, the difference, math term, the answer of subtraction problem is the difference. The difference is his discretionary calories. Just uh, uh, an interesting way that daily math, you know, you might have to do math on a regular basis, but knowing these terms like difference helps you figure this stuff out. Okay, that's all. Joe is active in sports and is seldom ill. He exercises regularly to stay fit and eats a balanced diet. Joe knows these habits help keep him healthy, happy, and less prone to diseases. Exercise is part of the food pyramid recommendations. That's why the pyramid includes a figure walking upstairs. Now, anybody else notice that they start mentioning a food pyramid? What's this food pyramid they're talking about? Maybe they're just seeing if we're paying attention. I don't know. But uh, this is not accurate right here. We're talking about the my plate, not a food pyramid. All right. that good nutrition and physical activity go hand in hand. You can follow Joe's lead. You don't need to be on a sports team. All you need to do is take up some physical activity, like bicycling, brisk walking, or jogging. Physical activity exercises your muscles, decreases stress levels, and helps you burn the calories you take in as food, so you maintain a healthy weight. When planning how to improve your diet, be sure to plan for physical activity too. What kind of exercise do you get? What kind of lifestyle do you have? If you routinely plop down on the couch to watch TV all night after a day of studying, then you have a sedentary lifestyle. If you walk your pet every day, then you have a moderately active lifestyle. But if you spend an hour or so every day in heavy physical activity, such as playing soccer, then you have an active lifestyle. Choose activities that you enjoy and can do regularly. You will probably be healthier and you just might feel better too. So there is a part of this where we had to describe the number of ounces, the cups, all of that, that chart. Oops, yeah, that chart will help you on this question. Basically, if you look up the, the rice versus eight ounces of meat, this says low fat meat, you can kind of figure out which one of these is the healthiest just based on the way it's describing low fat milk, low fat meat, that type of thing. Serving size and maximizing nutrients. Serving size might be one of the most difficult issues with eating healthy because the serving size that is there may not seem like enough for you. 
or it may be uh, it, packaged in such a way where you feel like it is okay to eat the whole package, but that package actually represents more than a serving size. For example, I cannot eat a bag of chips without eating a bag of chips, even though the serving size is, let's say, 11 chips and there's 10 servings in the bag. Um, a great example of this is a square of top ramen is actually two servings. How many of you have ever only eaten half a package of ramen? So um, we also learn to eat with our eyes and not a, a, an appropriate serving suggestion. So if you have a variety of items, a variety, a balanced number of items, then you're more likely to eat a serving of each thing that is in total filling. Just side note. You have seen that the number of calories you need in a day depends on how active you are. And you have seen that a balanced diet means eating foods in certain proportions from several food groups and making nutritious choices from each group. How balanced is your own diet? Here's one way to tell. List all the food groups and the recommended servings in each group. Then list the foods you prefer in each group. Next, write down what you eat for a given day and include the serving size, the approximate number of calories, and the amount of fat in each item. Making this list for several days in a row will show whether you've been eating a balanced diet. And there are apps for that. One is called My Fitness Pal, I believe. I believe it is free, but don't quote me on that. Look at these two meals. Which meal would you prefer to eat for lunch? Which one would provide the most balanced diet? Many people would say that meal B looks tasty, while meal A looks boring. And many would assume that meal A is healthier. But what if each meal had some nutrients that the other lacked? Meal A clearly has more vegetables than meal B. But meal B does include vegetables as well as grains, which appear to be missing from meal A. So if you were planning your food for the day, you might want to include the salad from meal A, perhaps with chicken for added protein, and a burger made from lean meat, preferably with a whole wheat bun. Skip the mayonnaise to minimize your fat intake. Let's take another look at the recommended serving sizes for teenagers from each food group. Keep these amounts in mind as you strive for a more balanced diet that will help you stay healthy. So this question says match the labels to the food items to rate them as healthier, healthiest, or unhealthy. So the healthiest option would be a bowl of cereal, salad, apricots, milk, grilled chicken. The unhealthy option would be a hamburger, french fries, cola, and ice cream. And the healthier option, healthier than this option, but not the healthiest option, would be chicken and rice soup salad, strawberries with cream. What this is missing is possibly enough of the grains that you would need. So, and then the cream might be uh, sweetened. All right, congratulations. We have completed the tutorial. Remember to complete your Guidelines for a Healthy Diet, Guided Notes. Notice that it does talk about my plate. Nobody, nowhere on here does it talk about a food pyramid. I'm going to write to the company and tell them how annoyed I am that A, I have to fill out the answer key to this, and B, it's just randomly throwing out extra information that's not accounted for. You got to watch out for that kind of stuff. But they've probably updated this 
You know, they updated these without double checking. Somebody wasn't doing a good job editing as the editor. This is where that math, the 2,800, leaves us with a difference of 200 calories. Here's the math. This is discretionary right here. This 200 is discretionary. Sorry if I go too fast. Make sure you write a, a thought-out summary. As we're talking about writing, describe three meals that you can eat in one day that will allow you to have a well-balanced diet. To answer a question like this, I highlight it, I change it, I, or sorry, copy and paste it and change it to a statement instead of a question. Three meals that you can eat in one day that will allow you to have a well-balanced diet would be a bowl of cereal. Oops. A bowl of cereal that would be a bowl hypos dang it okay well i don't want to waste your time but yeah look grammarly came in to, for the rescue a bowl of cereal that does not have added sugars a salad a salad apricots milk and grilled chicken now it says describe the three meals so that's why i added a little bit of description all right hope that went well good luck on the mastery test. Thank you.